work to make the port the best on the continent. Well, so a lot of automation work going on in the port. And looking at that container that's been lifted, it's already been keyed into a data. And that means that a lot of data that will be generated out of the port is going to be very, very accurate because almost everything is automated, electronic for that matter. And that is where this port is driving at. Last year, September 1st, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority took over the job of risk valuation, classification and inspection of imports in the port. They were supported technically by West Blue and ever since that period till now, that face, that thing they call National Single Window is what they have been doing all throughout. The first phase was called the Pre-Arrival Assessment Reporting System, PASS, and that was also being executed by uh, the customs with the technical support of West Blue. So after five months or so, we have been going out to ask people who do business in the port, the clearing agents, the freed forwarders and all of them, how that first phase of the national single window has been faring. Take a listen. The government through the Ghana Revenue Authority has started feasibility studies to implement the second phase of the national single window project. At the moment, we are doing feasibility studies. So officers are going to almost all the revenue bodies and gathering the information and put into a WC model. So they make sure they eliminate all the duplication and it becomes a perfect system for all of us to operate. The new system being implemented by Ghana Customs with technical support from West Blue Consulting Limited is in collaboration with GCNet and other agencies operating at the port. Meanwhile, players in the sea trade industry have commended the Ghana Customs and the technical partners for a successful implementation of the first phase of the national single window, which included the taking over of classification, risk valuation, and inspection of imports by customs from the destination inspection companies, and the implementation of the pre-arrival assessment reporting systems pass so obtaining an inspection report is key to the customs clearance and as such that process must be efficient it must be fast and it must be reliable this is what the single window is to us as freight forwarders the new reporting system i think it is better as a much improvement on the previous one the feasibility study of the second phase of the project is expected to end in April this year and will be followed by the automation of the processes and the procedures involved. The single window system introduced by government primarily provides the platform for an integrated clearance process to enhance transparency and ease ways of doing business at the port. With this application too, it is transparent. Like you submit it, you will see the progress of the work. Immediately you submit it tells you verification, so your documents are the verification stage. If there is something that they need to do, they will reject it. And when they reject, it comes with reasons. Stakeholders say the smooth nature in which customs took over from the DICs and the new system being operated needs to be overwhelmingly commended. The new single window has made a big difference in the processing of our inspection reports. Uh, I would like to encourage them to continue with the good work that they are doing. I would also like to appeal to them that they, they consider the inco terms on the commercial invoices when they are processing our CCVS. They attest that the current reporting system is far better, although a lot can be done to improve the system. One of the things that I would love to see is greater efficiency in populating the import declaration form from the MDA system to the PAS system because I've realized that sometimes there are delays. What I would like them to do is the duplication, data duplication, then work process duplication. Currently, when you are applying for your uh, IDF, you attach documents. That's your bill of lading, your parking list, your invoice. You send it to get the IDF. And then when you're coming to do the pass, that is you're coming to do for the application also, you have to attach the same document. That's we believe in IT database. Once I've submitted it, they should have access to it, but currently they don't have that access. That would have to do that duplication. Stakeholders hope that as Customs and West Blue Consult work to improve the system in the second phase of the project, the operating officials will grow more conversant with the procedures to enhance the processes. We are not totally out. There are still some few challenges, but they are minor. And 
we we'll always call on our partners. Once they identify any of the challenges in the process, just call the attention of the operators of this power system. And so the second phase of the National Single Window already feasibility studies are being undertaken uh, by the folks who are in charge at Customs as well as the technical partners West Blue Consulting. But what exactly is involved? What have they been doing as, as far as the feasibility studies is concerned? When are they to start the second phase? What would be involved in all of that? I sat down with the Chief Executive Officer of the West Blue Consulting Limited, that's uh, Madame Valentina Minta, to ask her all those questions about National Single Window and even the situations that existed before the entrance of the West Blue Consulting Limited. Ghana's National Single Window is looking at integrating all the processes that would exist in the supply chain of import, export, or transit. So it looks at having interoperable systems within the environment. So if you have an existing IT system, the key is to make sure that that IT system speaks to the other IT system in a timely manner so that all entities who need to regulate that pr particular um, commodity can do their work in a timely way to expedite, to save the time and cost of administering that particular commodity coming in or consignment coming into the country. So the pre-arrival assessment reporting system happens to be one of the services of a national single window. Another key um, feature or critical feature of a national single window is if I submit a data element to this single window, so if you can imagine a, uh, one window and behind that window having all the multitude of regulating agencies, bo and both public and private sector, so the vessel owners, the airlines, the ports, the container management, uh, the customs, the food and drug, the standards authority, etc. It's creating this one window so that if I submit my data to that single window, I should submit it only once. And it's up to those who are behind that single window screen to utilize it, to be able to provide me the necessary permits or certificates or clearance that I need. So phase one for Ghana was to go live with this pre-arrival regime, which was successfully done. And the, cost, the time and cost of administering the pre-arrival has signific been significantly reduced. We're now moving into phase two, where we're conducting a feasibility study to identify the needs and gaps within the entire supply chain so that we can see what is working well, what needs to be improved, and what needs to be created to enable us achieve the single submission of a national single window. Have you been able to lay your hands on some of the challenges, for instance, that have popped up as a result of you know, working on the first phase? with the past Some of the items identified is there's one duplication point um, outstanding. So that is the integration of supporting documents from the IDF to the PAS. So the IDF is the import declaration form which is administered on a different platform. And that is a trigger for obtaining your CCVR. That's your trigger for your trade transaction. So that is being done on one platform. All the supporting documents, say your invoice, your bill of lading, is being attached to that. But we haven't achieved that seamless integration with the PAS system. So what you find is the declarant now, after doing that and obtaining the IDF number, which is a unique reference number, they have to sign on to PAS to continue to pull the IDF, but they have to reattach the documents. So what we're doing is we're working with um, Customs, Ministry of Finance and GCNet and Ministry of Trade to move the IDF creation onto the PASS system, have all your validation points on the PASS system to ensure that seamless flow from IDF to CCVR. The other thing I have also heard is, is the fact that you know some of the officers probably are now getting their feet on stuff. So uh, there are a few things that they wobble over. Are you taking into consideration continuing to train the custom officers or probably support uh, the
them more in terms of training. I think with any modernization program or any reform program of this nature, this is to be expected, not just from the operators of the system, in this case the customs officers, but also the users. So we find that, there, I mean, it, the, it's a change management issue as well as a capacity building issue. For the last 15 years, things have been done a certain way. Therefore, it's moving away from the status quo to a new environment will, inquire, uh, will require some change management efforts, a lot of sensitization and capacity building on the tool itself. That is an ongoing thing. It's a never-ending um, process. But we are monitoring it carefully to ensure that it's not negatively impacting yeah. on the service that is being delivered. And we keep working at it to ensure that we get to that optimum goal for both sides. Like we hear them say all the time, if you get garbage in, you get garbage out. Mm -hmm. So if you're not getting the right data all the way from source of patches of mm -hmm. any good, mm -hmm. then you are likely to have situations where uh, people forge documents, Absolutely. They, Absolutely. they forge receipts, like license, mm -hmm. and that's what customs mm -hmm. have complained over the, mm -hmm. over the period. Yeah. Are you likely at any point in time to, to request information on good patches from outside? So that's exactly what the feasibility study is doing. We're looking at 29 government agencies and 15 private sector um, companies, entities, who administer some at some point in the supply chain. So for example, you have banks. You would have a letter of credit from a bank for that particular transaction. That letter of credit is going to have valuable information. So if I have agreed with my buyer or seller that the invoice amount is $1,000, I'm going to transfer exactly $1,000 from my account for that transaction. I'm not going to yeah. pay 800 and I'm not going to pay 1200 yeah. So that is one check or control mechanism that we have on the system. Similarly, on the manifest, if I'm saying for that $1,000, I'm bringing two cartons of bottles. Yeah. It's going to be two cartons of bottles that get onto that ship or onto that airline. My manifest data is going to tell me, give me some information about that. If I have transacted with my buyer or my seller, there's going to be a sales contract and an invoice that we would have exchanged. Now, that d sales invoice is going to hold a lot of information which must reconcile with that manifest data, which must reconcile with that letter of credit, which must reconcile with the application that I put through PASS, and must reconcile with the declaration that I put through the GCMS, and must reconcile with the physical goods that turn up. So I could put on my uh, documentation that I was bringing in plastic bottles. But at the physical bit, the scanning machine might pick up that this is not plastic, but it is glass. So you would go back to all those reconciliation and control points to highlight any anomalies that might have been thrown up when you have a look at the complete set of data that is available. This then enables the agencies direct finite resources to those high risk items. So instead of having a gatekeeper approach where you're standing at the border hoping with your torchlight that you're going to find something wrong. Now you work on intelligence. And that is intelligence is not based on one source or one document, but a reconciliation of various. Recently we all heard that the World Bank report ease of doing business were ranking somewhere over 130 uh, out of about 180 countries. Mm -hmm. Where does all of these national simple window business and all these technical stuff leading us? If we're able to provide a facilitated trade environment, that means the man on the street can buy their goods cheaper, good quality goods in a more affordable way because the, the importer wouldn't have had to pay so many administ um, administrative costs. So those cost savings should be translated to the man on the street. Secondly, um, what, what you actually achieve is if you have um, a facilitated port or an easy, uh, an effective port, you're going to attract more foreign direct investment. You're going to attract more, 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 more traffic or, 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 or um, more business. With that brings in healthy competition and variety of goods, which should be translated to the man on the street. 
And you have seen a couple of environments, you look at the environment, uh, the Ghanaian environment in which we're working right now, mm -hmm. and in which you're operating right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can get it right? And do you think this uh, dream or vision is achievable? Most certainly and definitely. I've worked in this environment in several in Central Asia. Uh, we worked in Mongolia, in Kyrgyzstan, in Kazakhstan, um, in China. Even we looked at their single window environment. Uh, we worked in the sub region in Nigeria. I think what is really key is the political will. And do we have that? We do certainly have that. For that single decision to end the destination inspection era after 15 years is a very commendable feat. Because to change a system within, after 15 years, when it becomes a part of the, of the fabric of the society, takes political will, takes leadership, and takes vision. Then you need collaboration. You need collaboration across all the, the stakeholders, the agencies, the private sector, the freight forwarder should be speaking to the agent. So it's a business to business have to be working closely together. Government to government have to be working even clo well, more closely together. And for the past five months, have you seen that? Sorry, the collaboration has been excellent. We visited 29 um, agencies and 15 private sector entities, the banks, the insurance companies, um, the terminal operators. And there is that um, commitment and that passion to see things different from what we've been working at. And if we are able to have all of these with, with a collaboration, effective collaboration, we, we are seeing that we have with the excellent leadership that we are seeing we have. Should all of these exist, at what point can we be patting ourselves on the back? We have set KPIs, key performance indicators, one of which is to reduce the time and cost of our trading across borders rankings, which you mentioned earlier, the World Bank trading across borders rankings, to reduce that by 50% in three years. So that's an aggressive target that we've set ourselves. Of course, if we overshoot that, that would be excellent. That means so we're going to be ranked like a 60 out of a 180 Absol country? Absolutely. Or Which is still not a good place, but it's a better place than <laughs> being 120. <laughs> Back in 1998, UNCTAD conducted a study. UNCTAD is a UN body that looks at trade. It conducted a study and looked at just one consignment moving from one country to another. And can you believe that one, for that one consignment, 40 documents have to be failed wow. over and over again. And of that 40 documents, you have 200 data elements. So this trader or this declarant has to be failed consignor, consignee, place of embarkation, HS code, value, over and over and over again. Why? does one have to do that when you can fill a master document and share it amongst the well, yeah, agencies who right. need to do their work and send that back. So to be able to reduce those 40 documents, it takes focus and it takes commitment. But what do you expect from stakeholder agencies you're working with as we move on to the second phase of this national single window? And what's ahead of us? So what's ahead of us is to um, finalize the blueprint and sign that off to have the implementation roadmap for that. So the expectation is the understanding from all stakeholder groups, public and private sector, what's the concept of a Ghana national single window is all about, what's in it for them, what are the gains, what are some of the pains that have to be, they have to go through to realize those gains so that when we hit turbulence times, we can all put on our seat belts, hold fast until we, hit, we, we, we come out of that. So I, it's really collaboration, collaboration, collaboration to ensure that, we, and setting up a clear vision. Yeah, and the, the, the end of the tunnel looks bright in your view? It does, it has to look bright. Um, it's our nation, we must be committed to change it. Our rankings is nothing to, to be excited about. So if we can just think about how we can, and rankings is one thing, that's on paper or on a website somewhere. You must feel 
that change in the field. You must feel as a, 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 as a citizen that when I'm bringing my goods or when I'm buying, I can see that there is a change. I can see that there's a change in attitudes, not just system-wise, but human attitudes. The people administering or supporting me, there is a change. There's a service culture being um, provided. And that is what we all have to work to. That's the environment. We, if we need to compete on the global scene as a, as a nation, if not, we're going to be left behind. Iron Ports can only wish the West Blue Consulting Limited and their partner Ghana Revenue Authority, uh, that's their leading partner, uh, the best of luck as they continue to make uh, doing business in the port the best.